Welcome everybody to our Facebook Live. Glad that you have tuned in today. In just a few moments, we're going to get into the Word of God, and I'm sure it's going to be a blessing to you. Praise God. Everybody lift your Bibles with me. I tell you, before we before we do that, let's let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to come before you. Thank you for all that you have done and for what you're doing at this moment. Thank you for what you will do momentarily. Thank you for our truth in the Holy Ghost that it may speak according to the perfect plan and will of God. That no corrupt communications proceed from my mouth, but only that which is good to the use of edifying me. That it may minister grace unto the hearer. I yield to the Holy Spirit and to the anointing that is upon me that the word of God will go forth freely in the name of Jesus, that the people will be ministered to according to your perfect will. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your mighty power. Thank you for the ministry of the spirit operating now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let your Bible with me now. And say with me, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. It is the Word of God. It is the Word of God. It is God speaking to me. It is God speaking to me. His purpose is to bless me. His purpose is to bless me. To change me. To change me. And to be glorified through my life. And to be glorified through my life. Therefore, therefore, I set myself in agreement with His Word. I set myself in agreement with His Word. By having a receptive heart. By having a receptive heart. And a readiness of mind to receive. And a readiness of mind to receive. And by being a doer of the word I hear. And by being a doer of the word I hear. Out of your own. And out of your own. I realize. I realize. That obedience to God's word is essential. That obedience to God's word is essential. In order to have God's best. In order to have God's best. For my life. For my life. Three openings today. We're going to begin with Matthew chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 7. And Malachi chapter 3. Matthew 6. Hebrews 7 and Malachi uh, chapter 3. Praise God. Matthew 6, I'm going to read uh, two passages, uh, two verses. I'm reading from the New King James, verses 19 and 20. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Then we go to Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews 7. In verse 8. Here, mortal men deceive time. But there he deceived them, of whom it is witnessed that he lives. And then we go to Malachi chapter 3. Malachi 3, beginning at verse 6. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your fathers ye have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, in what way shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed? In time and all. Your curse with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring me all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now, the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out such, pour, pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. This may seem uh, like an interesting discussion and something that is inappropriate to some. Uh, 
told some of us saying, are you going to talk about timing? Giving at a time like this? When we're in the midst of a pandemic, people are suffering and going through, and some people are losing jobs, and, and they'll start telling and all of these things. That seems inappropriate. Well, we'll see if that's inappropriate in just a moment. Now, this that I'm going to share with you, you know, we, uh, we talked about it a couple of years ago, but I think it is, it is pertinent. In fact, the Holy Spirit led me to, to minister this, and I want to share some things with you. Now, again, I, I brought this out several years ago, a couple of years ago, so I'm going to give you some statistics from the time that I gave this to you. I'm going to tell you something about the American Christian Church, the church in America today. The American church, the church in, in our nation, does not have a heart, a heart conviction about tithing and giving. But this is not exactly new. It is a statistical fact. I want to give you several things that I want you to consider, and then we'll get into our lesson. Tithers, those who tithe, make up only 10 to 20% of a normal congregation, no matter what the word of God would say. Now let me say this before I go any further. Some people are satisfied just knowing they're going to heaven. They don't really care about following what the scripture teaches. They just, as long as I'm going to heaven, it's okay. I may not do this and I may not do that, as long as I go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And that is not a good, <clears throat> excuse me, a good attitude to have. We should be wanting to please God in all things. Amen. Amen. And I think that sometimes we think that we can uh, please him when it's convenient for us. But if there's any inconvenience, then we are some kind of way exempt from the standards that God has set for us. I think that this is a shame uh, before God. That just thinking about the church world, and I'm, I'm just talking about the United States, I'm not even talking about in other lands, because I want to show you a few things. But if you think about that, tithers make up only 10 to 20% of a normal congregation. Isn't that something? Amen. That's, that's interesting. Only 5%, uh, that, by the way, is for all over, but only 5% of the U.S. tithe, with 80% of Americans only giving 2% of their income. Christians are only giving at 2.5% per capita. While during the Great Depression, they gave at a 3.3% rate. Mm -hmm. They did better during the Depression than they're doing today. The truth of the matter, and this is something why, this is one reason why what I'm saying today is appropriate even in this time. Amen. The more you learn about the scriptures and learn about God and how he views things, then you will understand what, what I'm talking about here. Now you think about that. The truth though is giving is a heart issue. Amen. It is not a money issue. Amen. Tithing and giving your giving of offering is a heart issue. Amen. Not a money issue. Now let's talk about the Mormon church for a moment. The Mormon church has 14 million members worldwide. 95% of Mormons tithe consistently. As opposed to the Christian church. And that, you know, is the difference. You, you do understand that. Amen. So I'm talking about the Mormon versus those who profess to be Christians. 
born again believers. Amen. Going to church all the time. Amen. Say they're on their way to heaven. Amen. Amen. Now here is, I just want to show you some a different religion doing some of the same practice, but they are more faithful in it Amen. than those who are supposed to be following Jesus. The Mormon church does about $8 billion a year. 56 million people go to church consistently on Sunday. That's about 20% of America. That's four times the worldwide membership of the Mormons. The combined income of the 56 million who go to church on Sunday is $2.5 trillion. If church going Christians tithe at 100%, if everybody, and God only asks for 10%, you know, but if, if Christians tithe at 100%, the income to the kingdom of God would be $250 billion a year. The combined income of the, of the 56 million go to church, I told you it's 2.5 trillion. Yeah. If, if church going Christians tithe at 100% the income to the kingdom of God would be 250 billion a year. Only about 5% of Christians tithe. That equals to about 2.5. 2 million 800,000 people who actually died. Isn't that something? The average donation by Christians who attend church is about $17 a week. That comes out to $70 a month and $840 a year. Based on those numbers, the combined giving to the church last year, well, this was several years ago, was $900 $52 million. We didn't even reach a big. The Mormon church put the U.S. Christians to shame. The Christian church outnumbers them four to one. Yet they outgave us by seven billion. That also meant that $249 billion that belonged to the church did not come to us. And if you split that among all Protestant churches, each would get $750,000. Uh, $15, Numbers like that are mind-boggling. What would happen if Christians got a conviction about giving and began to tithe everybody? There would be an additional $249 billion for churches to use and to distribute. The global impact would be phenomenal. Here's just a few of the things a church could do with the, that kind of money. $25 billion could relieve global hunger, starvation, and death from preventable diseases in five years. $12 billion could eliminate illiteracy in five years. $15 billion could solve the world's water and sanitation issues, specifically at places in the world where one billion people live on less than one dollar per day. One billion could fully fund all overseas missions work. And $196 billion would still be left over for additional ministry expansion. He said, well, why would you bring such a thing up now? We're in a pandemic. Yeah, I know it. And we've been in one before now. But not, not the kind that we're talking about. Praise God. Amen. 
but something that has spread throughout the church. We in the pandemic with time and offer. Been that way for a long time. Amen. Praise God. Now some people uh, say that they can't afford to pay God. Then we read again, we, we read the, the, the passages. I just want to bring that up. Some people say that they can't afford to, to tithe or, and, and to give offerings. That's what they say. And they also say that God understands that. God knows what I have and what I can do. <coughs> I notice this, that it's usually <coughs> not enough money or whatever is most important to you. Some people don't tithe, but they still got cake. Amen. They don't tithe to give, but they got a cell phone. And the latest. The newest iOS or Android that or whatever you have. Don't tithe. Don't give. Don't support the work of the kingdom. And you see, there are people who have a certain demonic demonically inspired mindset. Yes, yes. They don't know that that's what it is, but I'm telling you that's what it is. It's a demonic thing. It's a thing where the people, where people are having a certain prejudice against the church Amen. and against ministers. Amen. And I understand because some ministers have, have made poor examples. Some have become poor examples of certain things, and, and, and some have flaunted things to show how blessed they are. But the world don't understand that. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not that the minister be blessed. I mean, what's wrong with the minister being blessed? You want to be blessed. Amen. But it's not that they shouldn't be blessed, but I think that we have to be careful. The world already has a certain mindset in it. But I'm not even just talking about the world. There are people in the church that whose minds never got renewed when it comes to finances in the church, Amen. even after they got saved. Amen. Yeah. And there is a, a demonic thought inspired by demons to give you the idea that the church is just after your money. Or the pastor is after your money. You know, if there's somebody that is not real, let's just say it. I'm not accusing anybody of being a phony or anything like that. But let's just say it. there was literally some phony minister doing some wrong to get money. Well, think about it for you. Suppose you had a pocket full of money. And let's just say you had $100 bills. $20 bills, so forth. And you happen to look through your, your money and you discover that one of the hundreds or one of the twenties is counterfeit. So let me ask you what you would do. Get rid of the counterfeit <laughs> and keep the rest. Or throw it all away. Which one are we going to do? We're going to get rid of the counterfeit. Yes. So just because I came across something counterfeit doesn't make everything else that was real counterfeit. We can't use as an excuse what somebody else has done. We have to, we do whatever we do as unto the Lord, not as unto man. Amen. Praise God. And if you go into a church and that you say that, that is not right, not doing the will of God and all that kind of stuff, well, why are you there? Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. If it's good enough for your membership, then it ought to be good enough for your, for your support. Come on. Amen. Look, you know, I'm not going to get a lot of amens today, <laughs> and especially out there. <laughs> Where folks are watching. I know that. Talking right. Talking right. But it's true. Amen. So at what time 
If something is the word, word of God, then it's the will of God. So at what time does God say, based upon your situation, you don't have to do this because now my will changed or you don't have to obey my will or my word because of your situation. All right, give you a simple thing. Uh, uh, the Bible says, thou shalt not steal. Do you think that's, that's in the mind of God, that we should not steal? Amen. Now, wait a minute. So what if I'm hungry and I go down to the corner market and the fruit stand and while a man is not watching, I'm stuffing a bag or something, in, stuffing it with food and produce and I walk out. Does God say, well, I understand why you did that because you're hungry. At least you got a reason. Would God say that? Absolutely. I would still be a thief. My hunger doesn't excuse my fever. That's right. You, you get my point? Amen. Just because you have a certain situation doesn't change God. We started off in, in Malachi. He said, I am the Lord and I change not. He's not changing on the basis of of your experience. Amen. Or your situation. Come on. Amen. Good word. He's not changing. Amen. A lot of us uh, have, a lot of people have used the present situation as an excuse. That's right. Some because they're not in church. I'm not doing anything about supporting the church. Amen. Churches are literally closing down. I know that some in some states are still closed and some cannot go back. Literally. Some, well, some, minute, some are selling the churches, selling the property, not for some, I mean, so because they're not going to have it anymore. This is literally happening as we speak. Is this the will of God? No. Is this the plan of God? No. Do you stop buying other things just because of what's going on? No. This is not one of those messages that's going to make you shout. But hopefully it'll make you think. Amen. Amen. So let's deal with the, the idea that it's, it, it's, you know, God knows that I can't afford it. He understands. This is what I said. Some people say they can't afford to pay tithe and that God understands that. Well, is that true? Is, is, is that true? Well, before we go there, let me say this. Because let, let's start with this, because I went into Malachi and I said some things there. And some say that tithing is not mentioned in the New Testament. But we saw in Hebrews 7 that it was. Amen. And one of the things about that it says there is that here, men, mortal men, receives it. But there, he receives it. Of whom it is witness that he lives. Who is it? that it is speaking about, that it's with witness that he lives. Jesus. Are y'all here? Are y'all going home? Amen. Well, it's okay to say amen. amen. I ask the question. Praise God. You're not a jury. This is not a trial. You just be quiet. No, no, I want, I want you to answer. Amen. Amen. So, God, you, God's word is still God's word, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we see that Jesus, when we do something, here, for instance, you've heard me say this before, your gift may leave your hand, but it doesn't leave your life. Yeah. Because it affects something. Yeah. Right. 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 The same thing is true with, with your tithe. There's tithe and then there's offering. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. 
But some say that tithing is not mentioned in the New Testament, but we saw it mentioned. And he's saying, here men receive it, but there he receives it. So that means when you do what you're supposed to do here, the Lord is actually receiving it. Amen. Amen. The Lord is actually receiving it. And when you don't, you're withholding it. Not just from men here, come on, come on. but him there. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Then we deal with the issue of uh, I can't afford to. And God understands that. Well, is that true? Let's go to the book of Mark and get a and learn something about Jesus. And not only about Jesus, but about how God views certain things. Mark 12. Mark 12 and 41. Praise God. Now, I want you to think about something. Do you know, do you know that Jesus had a treasury? Amen. Amen. Did you know that Judas was the treasurer? Yes. Remember that Judas was complaining about, uh, you know, uh, the woman pouring this expensive ointment on Jesus and all of that. And John said about, he said that, you know, Judas said, well, money could have been spent like on the poor. And John said he didn't even care about the poor. He said that because he was a thief. Yeah. Who John said? Uh -huh. about you. Amen. And it's interesting to me that Jesus let him be treasured. But he's a thief. In reality. But let's go here to tomorrow. Now, Jesus led. Listen, now, stop and think about something for a minute. Because some people think Jesus was dirt poor had nothing, and they take a scripture like, the birds of that, you know, have the branches and all this, but some man has to wait their head. And they take that literally and don't understand what he's actually saying. But, but not only that, they think he just, just walked around like a, just a dirt pole. But think about something for a minute. Here's a man who's walking down, he walks down, you know, down the road here, and he sees, he sees these people fishermen. These are commercial fishermen. These, this is not Fred, Jed, on the <laughs> with a little pole. These are commercial fishermen. Yes, this is their livelihood. Yes. This is how they live. Yes. And he says, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. How do they live? They're going to leave their business. They left their father. They left their neck. They left the family business and went and followed Jesus. How are they being cared? He had 12 men, 12 grown men with him for three and a half years. 12 grown men. How did they eat? You think he worked miracles all the time? How did they eat? How about clothing? You think they had the same thing on for three and a half years? They were with Jesus. They followed. So he became he became uh, uh, responsible for their upkeep. Amen. Yeah, man. See, that's, a lot of people don't have that concept. They don't pay attention to that. You got called off your job and from your family business to follow me. How are you going to eat? All right. It's good too. Matter of fact, when you read the scripture, it tells you it was the support of people Amen. that caused, that is how Jesus was able to do what he did. Amen. Rich people. Yes. And others. So let's, let's pick up here. What did I tell you? 12 and, and 41? Yeah. Now watch this. Now Jesus is evidently, there's, there's a treasury and a, co a collection going on. Now Jesus sat, verse 41, 
opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury. And many who were rich put in much. And they should. Because if you make good money, you ought to give good. Amen. 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 What a shame. Your income keeps going up, but your offering stays the same. And you'll die. When you die. Oh, no, that was a little bit of It shouldn't be that you, you are increasing, but your gift isn't. Amen. Amen. And many who were rich put in much. Now, listen to this. We're talking about, I can't afford to. Come on. Then one poor widow. Oh, hold on a minute. First of all, she's poor. That's the first thing. No, no, she, she, she's not. That's not. She, she this is not something I'm poor in spirit. Amen. She's poor, financially poor. Amen. When you're poor, you don't have enough. Amen. Rich means you're abundantly supplied. Amen. You got more than enough. Amen. Poor means you don't have enough. Amen. This was a poor. Not only was she poor, but she was a widow. That means her husband died. Now notice what Jesus said. Let's, let's keep going. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which make a, 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 a quandary. I looked in, in, in one thing it said about Four cents. One other thing says, so between one penny and four cents is what she put in. So he called his disciples to himself. So they're all there. And he called them to himself. He didn't make an announcement to everybody else. He said nothing to the woman. And he said to them, as surely I say to you, that this poor widow has put more in, more than all those who have given to the treasury. Look at that, hold on now. The way people think today, because she's a widow and poor, she shouldn't be given anything. That's the way people think. But Jesus, the Son of God, God manifests in the flesh, didn't have that attitude. Amen. Notice what he did not do. He did not stop the woman and say, you can't afford to do this. Don't do it. Amen. He knew what she had because he was able to say so. Right there. He knew of her limitation. He knew her situation. Amen. But he did not stop her. And from doing it. Why not? Why doesn't Jesus stop? There's two things that, that really stand out to me. Because the way a lot of people think is that what should have happened, that this woman is given this away, what should have happened is that she should have been, you know, stop. Don't get there. In fact, what should have happened beyond that is perhaps he takes something out of the treasury and gives her. Or because he sees her need. Jesus saw the need of the woman and did nothing like most people think he would have done. He didn't even speak to the woman. He spoke to his disciples about the woman. And he testified, he showed something, that this woman had put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. He said, this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury, for they all put in out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in way 
wait a minute, not just an offering, all that she had. She didn't have money in the bank. She didn't have something sold in the mattress. She didn't have put back money. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. How some people have put back. Ladies, y'all especially know what I'm talking about. Huh? When the lady say, I'm broke, she's down to her put back. <laughs> She ain't breaking that. <laughs> well, this one ain't have no put back money. She gave up everything she had. Doesn't it make sense with the way people think today that she should have been prohibited from giving? Amen. Doesn't it make sense the way people think today that something should have been done for the woman? But we're talking about Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Why didn't he? Didn't, Jesus didn't think that this woman couldn't afford to give. Did he? He knew that her giving was necessary. Amen. See, the laws of God work a certain way. Yes. And people this I, I say this so much. That I don't know if it, people hear it or not. The laws of God don't change. Amen. Amen. Things work a certain way. The laws of the kingdom work a certain way. I, I, I've said it over and over and over. I talk about it when I'm teaching on healing and, and faith. And those. It doesn't change. Amen. Amen. It doesn't change. Negative things can happen to a child, just like it can happen to an adult. Right. Laws can be broken. Doors can be opened, Amen. even unconsciously. But that doesn't stop the negative effect of it. Right. 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 Nothing changes. See, Jesus knew something. In, in Luke 6, 38, Jesus said something. I'm again reading from the New I'm, I'm, I'm reading this. Well, well, let me say it like this. It says in Luke 6 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake together, and run it over, shall men give into your bosom. But with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Right? Amen. Now, before I read that in, in, in another translation, I, I, I want you to understand this is a law. Give, and it shall be given. This idea, and I've seen this happen in churches. You know, if you don't have anything, come and touch the basket. What's that going to do? That ain't going to put anything in the basket. Come and lay your hand, touch the basket. The basket has been touched so much, I wouldn't be surprised to jump up and say I'm here. <laughs> I had zero. 
He had a quarter. We stopped at a store on the way to the church, which we had to walk to. Which was, we were thinking a bus, we had to take a bus, one bus and transfer to another bus. So we were not like around the corner. So we walked. And we had, we had to do that all the time, walk back and walk back. And we walked it, and we stopped at a store someplace, and he went and got change for the quarter and gave me a dime. Now I got something to give. Amen. Now I didn't understand these scriptures. I didn't know anything. I didn't know hardly any Bibles at all. But the law still worked. Amen. Amen. So he put 15 cents in and I put it down. That was my offer. That's all I had. Amen. But I had to do something. Amen. Amen. If I borrow from you or if you give me something, once it is in my hand, it's mine. Yes. Amen. Now I can, from my heart, do what I need to do. Amen. Amen. Now I put myself in a position. He says, give and it shall be given unto you. That's an absolute promise. Amen. It shall not, it might be, just possibly. It's depends on what mood I'm in. No. It's a law. Amen. Give and it shall be given unto you. I like the way the uh, New Living Translation says, Give and you will receive your gift. And you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Press down, shaken together to make room for more. Running over and pour into your life. The amount you get will determine the amount you get back. That's what the scripture says when it says, the measure, the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Now think about that and think about this woman. That's why Jesus could say she gave more. Because she gave everything. I'm not telling you not to give everything you got. I'm not saying anything like that. But I'm just showing you that God measured her gift. God judges your gift by what you have left over. Amen. 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 So this one person comes in and gives a hundred dollars. But they got two thousand in the pocket. Another person comes in and they only have ten dollars and give five. The one who gave five gave far more than the one who gave up. Right. In the sight of God. With the same measure that you meet with all the children measured to you again. Yeah. It's not dollar for dollar. Right. Yeah. Or pound for pound or whatever your currency is. That's not how it is. He's the reason Jesus said, look at what Jesus said about this woman. Why he said this. He said she gave more than all the rich people. Amen. They gave out of their abundance. She gave out of her poverty, and the Lord looked more favorably on hers yeah. than that. Why? He didn't say you can't afford to. When we get this idea, I can't afford to. We're in a pandemic. I can't. Listen, there's not a person, I don't believe there's anybody under the sound of my voice anywhere. Who is in the condition that woman will be? Amen. 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 She's in bad shape. Amen. It's possible. It's possible. But highly unlikely that he's in my mind. Amen. That someone would be that poor. Perhaps so, I don't know. But most of the people that I talk to are not that poor. Amen. Most of the people that, that none of you are that true. Amen. Amen. You're not that true. Amen. And see, I've been to a lot of countries. And what some of us call poor, some of some of what we call low income people here are rich compared to some people. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. That's the truth. We have to understand I'm doing it. I'm, I'm working the law. I'm operating according to a law. Absolutely. Let's go back to Hebrew for just a minute. Let me show you something else. Oh, wait. There was another point I wanted to make before we go, go to Hebrew. There was another point I wanted to make. Uh, I, I did make this point earlier about it's not in the New Testament. And of course, we see that it is, it, it is mentioned in the New Testament, but let's, let's go back to that for just a moment. You know, some people say this, there's uh, no place in the New Testament where tithing is, is taught. Well, listen, we don't see it anywhere in the New Testament where music is taught. There's no place in the New Testament, church, uh, of where music was mentioned. As part, of, as part of their worship. Amen. Now we see it throughout the Old Testament. But we don't see it in the New Testament. In fact, there's some church organizations today that don't believe in having music. Amen. For that very, very reason. But listen to this. Since we don't see a mention of it, should we assume that music ceased to be a part of their worship? As it had been in the Old Testament? I, I don't think so. You know, uh, how many of y'all know that a harp is a musical instrument? Amen. In the book of Revelation, harp, a musical instrument, is mentioned as part of worship in heaven. Which shows us as though, although it was not mentioned in the New Testament outside of Revelation, them showing that that was a revelation, to, but in the epistles and all of those, things, you didn't see anything about it because that wasn't the important thing anyway. Amen. It was only part of their worship, but it wasn't the important thing. The word was the important thing. Amen. So we see that it happened. It, it had to have happened. I mean, just because we don't see it mentioned, doesn't mean it didn't take place. If God was against music, there wouldn't be no harps or any other kind of musical instrument there. Amen. Amen. So it can't be against it. If you're not against it, then it's according to his will. Well. Plus, Jesus prayed, said, uh, remember in Matthew 6, he, and, and, and actually in Matthew 6, said, he was talking about what we call the Lord's Prayer. And one of the things he said to pray, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we know they have music in heaven, or have music in heaven, so why would it be against his will to happen on earth? Amen. But yet there's no mention. Amen. Well, just because there's no mention specifically, except it is a mention, but it's not taught in the, in the New Testament, does that mean it's not God's will? No. no. See, the only thing that you can, there are things that happen in the, under the old covenant that don't happen today under the new covenant. But those things are, are obvious and show. There are things that change. There are things that have changed. God doesn't change, but there are things that have changed. The way things are done have changed. But when we give and honor in our tithe and offering, isn't that as unto the Lord? You know, tithing didn't start under the law. Amen. Amen. Go back to Hebrews for a minute. I, I'm telling you something really that, that should bless you, Amen. set you free. Amen. 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 Stir you up. Yeah. Because we're going to receive a reward. I'll, I'll speak of that in, in just a second. But let's go back to Hebrews 7. But this time, Hebrews 7, starting at verse 1. 
For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. That's a title. First, being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. Without father, without mother. That's, that's, that's talking about without record of his father. Right. You can't come here and not have a father. No. <laughs> you born, you got a father and a mother. Amen. 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 Without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, recorded. That's what it's talking about. Yes, sir. Are you listening to me? Amen. But now Abraham gave tithe to Melchizedek before the law. Because the law didn't come for several hundred years after Abraham. Y'all do know that, right? Yeah. There's hundreds of years after Abraham that Moses came. The law didn't come until Moses. Y'all know that? Amen. Well, please say something like that. So I, I know you know it. So you got, you got Abraham giving time long before the law. Now, during the law, God included. And it was, it was voluntary before the law and mandatory during the law. Amen. Now, we're not under the law, but should we not give? Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Praise God. God always expects us to give out of what we have. Yes. No matter what that is. And our gift is accepted according to what we have, not what we don't have. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians 2. Praise God. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 8. 2 Corinthians 8. Are you there? Amen. 2 Corinthians 8. Let's look at verse 12. For if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has and not according to what he does not have. Your giving, you, if, if you are, if you accept it, if you make a decision to obey, God's not expecting some poor person to give like a rich person. This is not a competition. Amen. 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 God is expecting you to give out of how he blessed you. He told them in the Old Testament, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gave you power and did well, yes. that he may establish his covenant. Amen. It's not just about you. Amen. It's us to work, not so you can spend everything on yourself, but the scripture says that you may have to give to others. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Isn't that something? That one of the reasons why God wants you to work is so that you can have to give to others. Amen. Amen. When was the time to be brought into the storehouse of the Lord? Not your house. Amen. The storehouse. All right. yeah. Amen. Some years ago, I was at the home of a gentleman that was in our church. And something happened and with the pastor and, and him. So the pastor sat him down and he was a little bothered about it. I happened to be at his, you know, house and he had some things going on. Anyway, I'm not gonna get into too much because he made it on. But anyway, I was talking to him and, and he was talking to me about time, you know, time I, I think I asked him something about what are you going to do? You going to pay your tithe? And he said, he said, the Bible said that to bring all the tithe to the storehouse that they may be meat in my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, 
and of course he's, he's just being foolish but, but we you know and we laughed about it but he really had that I'm not giving I'm, I'm gonna bring it to my own I'm gonna give it to myself and I've seen other people they think that they have the right to take their tithe and pay mamas like this Grandma was rich. Billy Bob's. No, that's not what you're supposed to do. You don't take it and do what you want with it. Amen. You don't get to decide what it's going to be. I told you earlier, this wasn't going to be one of those to make you shout. I didn't know it would, you know, make you mute. <laughs> <laughs> Your time is a designated amount, which is a tenth part. Your offering, remember that he said, we're going to have you around in tithes and offerings. Your tithe is not your offering. Your tithe is your tithe. Amen. Your offering is something else. Yes. Amen. Now your offering, and it's an offering. Amen. Because they had several kinds of offerings. And sometimes in the church today we have different offerings for different things that we have to do. Amen. 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 If you have, for instance, a building fund, then the offering you give for that is that. Is that. That's for the building fund. But you may have other things. You may have some kind of system for feeding the poor. You will get offerings for that. Amen. So there are different offerings. But in the offering, you choose what you're going to get. That's what the Bible is talking about when it says, let, that, that you, let every man purpose in his heart. What you give should be purposed in your own heart. Amen? Amen. It's really 2 Corinthians All right, 9, verse 7. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. When you, not, not, not under compulsion, not when you're being forced to give it. You're not supposed to give because you don't want to hear somebody fussing. I'm going to give this. I ain't really got it. I'm going to go ahead and give it because, you know, they're going to be talking about me if I don't. And all that. Then you don't, get, you don't receive a return. You get your reward. No fussing. Are you listening to it? Let each one give. Listen, let's go to verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. But God loves a cheerful giver. Now, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always, those who are given, yes. that you always have all sufficiency in all things, yes. may have an abundance for every good work. Yes. Mm -hmm. You do what you're supposed to do for the kingdom, and God does with each, uh, what he's supposed to do for you, or yes. what you need him to do for you. Amen. 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 A free will offering is according to what you purpose in your heart. And your return will be according to what you give. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you sow bountifully, God knows what you have. He knows what you can give and what you can't. He knows when you're being stingy. Amen. You could really give more than that, but you're not. But if mama needs it, you give it to her. If there's some, some friend needs something, but we're not getting, now, now I'm not saying that for me, I'm talking about the king. Amen. Now you know, for many years, I, 
talk about it like a, I mean, but I will tell you the amount and all. But you know, for years, I was the number one giver in our entire ministry. Amen. Amen. Nobody gave like I did. How do I know? Because I see what you get. Amen. You know, we have back in that. And I know what I was giving. Amen. And not even counting my wife. Me alone. Just what I was doing alone. Amen. Amen. So I'm not saying something I don't practice. Amen. Amen. And that is just here. I'm still on the top. Amen. I got to be the top two. Most three. I still get more than most of the entire congregation gets. I'm not preaching this for me. I'm not trying to get money from anybody. Are you listening? I'm talking about what we could do in the kingdom of God. How many of our lives could be saved and helped and blessed? I've run out of time and didn't know it. But I'm going to finish this. We're going to be rewarded by our giving. Amen. Let's close with Romans 14. Romans 14. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Romans 14. And I'm going to start at verse 10. Verse 10. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I read, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give account of himself to God. All of us who are born again, I mean, every person on earth is going to have to give an account. But we're going to give an account at the judgment seat of Christ. And at the judgment seat of Christ, it's, it's the judgment of the believer's works. Our sins would have already been, are, are already washed away. So it's not the judgment of our sins, it's the judgment of our works. Amen. And every Christian, Every born-again believer is going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and give an account of what you did in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. Including how you support it. Amen. Amen. So really, we're going to get rewarded twice. Now, let me say this as I close. You understand, and we'll talk about this sometime later, but you understand that not everybody going to heaven get to say the war. Amen. Amen. You know that there are some people who are not going to receive anything. I mean, all of their works are going to be burned up, and they're going to suffer the loss of reward. You know that. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus is going to critically appraise the worth and value of everything you do. And, and by the way, there are people giving that is not going to count. They're going to be able to say, I gave X amount of dollars. I gave this. The church needs this. or I, I, I laid upon my heart or whatever the case is. I purposed in my heart to do something. I gave it. But the Lord is not just going to look at what you gave. He's going to look at your motivation. Amen. What was in your heart. Amen. And when you do things to be seen of men, you have your reward. Amen. You have your reward. So you can't do it to be with the wrong woman. Amen. I don't give to impress you. Amen. I don't even, I, and even the thing I told you, I only told you for the sake of helping you understand that I'm not preaching with some ulterior motive. Amen. 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 
Amen. Amen. I'm not preaching with all children anymore. God is obligated to meet my needs. If he don't use you, he'll use someone else. Amen. But as you know, your 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 time and all that other kind of need. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But the, that's the only reason. For, so, but when I when I'm doing something, I do it as unto the Lord. Yes. That's where I'm going to get my reward. Amen. Amen. That's who I'm serving. I get to other ministries. And those like it, because they're doing something. Yes. Well, we don't do all ministries don't do all the same thing. So they may be doing some things we're not doing. I'm going to support them. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to get a part of the reward Amen. for doing that work. Amen. It's going to be laid to my account. Amen. That's the good thing about it. I got all kind of seed out there. Amen. Amen. So I have a promise from God that it shall be given unto me. Good measure, press down, shake it together to make room for more. Amen. And run it over. Shall be give or drop into your lap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm receiving it. Praise God. But now when I stand before the Lord Jesus, he pulls out the record. He pulls out the record of my gift. He pulls out the record of my time. Remember, mortal men receive here, but there he receives. Amen. Yeah. Your gift is a sweet smelling scent in the nostrils of God. So some people are not going to receive anything for their gift, but they don't do it. That's right. Amen. 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 And if what you're doing is not for the benefit of the kingdom, it's all selfish, you get no reward. Amen. Amen. So I thought during this pandemic, I need to obey God. If it's a fact, you know, the Bible said preach in season and out of season. Amen. Amen. It may seem out of season. Amen. But it's a word that needs to be Amen. said. Amen. Too many people Amen. are not doing what they're supposed to do when their churches are concerned. Amen. When the kingdom of God is concerned. Amen. 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 I heard one person on a, on a, on a certain Christian talk show, what, well, show, ministry, whatever. And, and they did something I did not like. Because at the end, they were asking people, you know, bring an offering in there. Now, some of you, because of the pandemic, you're not going to church and all that. So, why don't you give your time here? Because oh. they don't belong there. Amen. 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 Belong in their church. Amen. Their church. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. I had a problem with that. Yes, Amen. Amen. And I consider contacting him about that. Amen. 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 What? It's already enough. You only see a handful of people getting in the first place. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, lift your hands. I'm done with that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 